All right. Welcome. All right, let's do it. All right, welcome guys. And thank you very much for attending our new and updated tribe campfire for April. Very excited to be here. And I'm uh, the host for part of this and we're gonna have amazing Claudia joining us. So is everyone in the group yet? Yep. Okay, yeah. Claudia, I'm going to hand over to you very soon. Okay. Coast. All right, you guys can see the full screen, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, whoops. <clears throat> All right, great. So let's get started. Welcome, guys, to the Tribe Heart Campfire, and it's the April edition. So really, really excited to get this up and running. We've got some exciting featured speaker. I've been waiting to have her on to share her story. And like we do every single month, this is about you, this is about us, and this is about helping us solve our concerns and help us grow and connect with each other globally. So let's get into it. So <clears throat> the first will be just a little bit on the agenda. Uh, welcome all the visitors and just quick introductions. Uh, in case some of you don't know, uh, Eunice Mashano is the COO, Chief Operating Officer for the Tribe Hut, and she's mainly focused on the Zambia region. Uh, CFO is Michelle, uh, who is uh, based here in Indonesia. My name is Aaron Mashano, I'm one of the facilitators, and we have Claudia here who can wave. Uh, she's our second facilitator and will be running the second part of this event. Uh, we have our marketing lead, Wina, and uh, also have you guys, the amazing guests, and some hosts here too. Uh, work with. Okay, so just what's on the agenda today. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Tribe Hut, uh, what the Tribe Hut is and what we're actually here aiming to do. We're going to give you guys a chance as well. There's, there's some of you are going to see this on Facebook Live, but most of you, sorry, the other way around, some of you are going to see this on uh, Zoom, where you get a chance to actually share some of your concerns and we'll see if we can help you have some recommendations to solve some of those current concerns. But the rest of us who may or may not be able to log in have a chance to see this on Facebook Live later, and then you can still share your comments there, and we'll do our best to answer and solve issues and give you some resources through Facebook Live. So that's the format. So we're going to also cover a part called the Shine, and we use this also on our Facebook community called uh, Tribe Heart uh, Community on Facebook, where we just give you guys an opportunity to share things like if you're referring business to each other, if you made or won any business in the calendar month of March that's gone, uh, any testimonials if you used any products or services amongst the group, and then maybe also, <clears throat> excuse me, if you uh, had a one-to-one -one meeting uh, with anyone in the tribe here because we're really big believers on connecting with each other. Uh, and then the most exciting part that I'm uh, waiting on is to listen to uh, a really great tribe member and now friend, Lisa, who's going to share a little bit about her journey and uh, what she's all about. And we're going to, after that, do a little magical thing called Do Me A Solid. I won't say too much about what this is uh, in general, but just understand we also not only want you to be inspired by our speaker, but we want you to be also inspired by maybe someone else in the audience that may be sharing their story. And you might go like, hey, I'd really love to connect with that uh, dreadlock fellow there in Kenya called CJ, for example. So we'll give you an opportunity uh, when we share a link in the uh, Facebook group, uh, sorry, in the chat, where you can link up, put some details and say, I'd like to meet the person I met in this event. And then in the back end, we'll make that happen for you. Uh, so the most important part where we're hoping you've already done, if you've been here before, is uh, we like to identify some concerns or constraints or issues that you might be facing currently in this new time. And then we'll give you an opportunity for you to identify some of those issues, discuss them with us. Claudia will be facilitating that section. And then we'll get on to the campfire part two, which is where we we'll discuss and solve some of those issues if we have time. And then anything left over again, we'll take back to Facebook Live and we'll be able to uh, answer some questions at the Facebook page at a later date. And then last but not least, we are very big on being like business physicians. You get an opportunity if you haven't already to do what we call the entrepreneur assessment, where you can get to track what stage of the business journey you're on, and maybe potentially we can give you a roadmap to weaponize yourself to help you move to the next step. Okay, so that's the general agenda of uh, what we'll be doing. 
And uh, just to kick off with the introduction, so Tribe Heart for us is, uh, you know, we're really passionate about entrepreneurship, if you haven't figured that one out. But we're also seeing that there's become a new uh, demand for people who are looking for further education, uh, you know, in terms of entrepreneurship, or maybe some people looking for leadership uh, attributes so that they can, you know, get their skill development up while they're working at work or while they're already in their businesses. So this is a big part for us. Uh, second is, you know, as we've been getting around the world, people have been hearing about us, people have been referring us to other people. We are now in about five continents and we're very fortunate to be dealing with people in 18 industries in certain businesses that they're in. And what we're finding is that these people are not only coming with their industry expertise, but they're also coming with some of the similar concerns. So from a bird's eye view, we're able to find out what are the main issues or constraints that people have across all the industries. And our job is to make sure that we can provide some uh, systems or steps that you can help to solve your issues. And uh, obviously the benefits for you to be part of this tribal organization is firstly, you know, we're really keen on helping you develop some soft skills. So people come to us, either they're looking for pitching, maybe you've got presentations to present, they're looking for networking skills, or maybe they're looking for sales skills, or confidence building skills, this is a really good platform where you can get some of those opportunities met. Uh, the other part is we have a unique marketing system which we call the Tribe uh, Marketing System. It's a nine step tribe referral tool that we give people. It comes with tools that you can use and the main goal is really to generate organic sales through an existing network. So it's been really working really well for us. And the last is the peer support and I think this is the most important in this time. We find that if you're part of our accelerator program called the Marketing Accelerator Program, uh, you get an accountability buddy, checking in with each other weekly, and also some coaching uh, support in case you have any questions. So up to date, we've been kind of running this format uh, for the last three years or so, and we are just very keen on keeping track of some of the numbers of some of the accomplishments we've had. So we've had about 2,401 one-to-one -one meetings. That's basically where maybe if I like someone like Lisa, want to connect with her on business opportunities, we book in a time on Zoom or face-to-face -face before the COVID, you know, we count that as a really big victory because that shows our opportunity to measure connection. The other one is 469 deals done. That's where maybe Lisa gets a referral from me, someone buys her jewelry or whatever she's uh, promoting at the time. And then we don't get commissions from that, but we just say, hey, Lisa, could you just send us a report on that deal that you did this month? And then we add that to our track record. So as a network, we are showing that we're not only uh, meeting up to support each other, but we're also getting business done in a natural, organic and authentic way. And collectively we've generated just for this year alone, uh, six hundred and sixty-seven thousand four hundred and twenty dollars. So now we celebrate, but we're really excited about that because all of this just came from a collective group effort. So that's what really Tribot does in the accelerator stage, and we're really excited to share that with you guys. If this is something you're open to, uh, feel free to talk to us at the end. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what makes the glue work for us. So what's the glue that holds the wall together? Well, number one is meaningful work. So what I'd like to do, because, you know, I can't help myself. I'm a facilitator as well. I'd like you just to maybe take a pen and paper now and just ask yourself some questions. Like if you had a value set or if you value the word meaningful work, how do you actually define work for yourself in your career, in your projects, in whatever it is that you do? How do you actually define it? Because this is a very important question. Some of you find I put a post just recently on Facebook, you might trade a full-time job of working 60 hours a week for an entrepreneurial career where you're working 120 plus hours a week. So if you're not really finding that work meaningful, you're going to struggle. So how do you measure the quality of your work that you produce? And are you that type of artist that's prepared to put in some extra hours to get better at your craft? That's really what we are trying to define. So maybe just a couple of things for you to write down there, just reflect on how meaningful is your work in your business and how do you quantify the production and the quality of it? How do you measure that in a week, in a month, in a year? It's a very interesting question to ask yourself so you don't stay being busy, being busy. Second uh, value that we have is financial sus uh, sustainability. Now for us, it doesn't mean you're racking in millions of dollars every year from day one. This is actually not probable for 99% of people, maybe the 1% freak accidents there make money in what they call overnight success. But most of us are basically are working the midnight or working gradually towards our destination. And from what I've found for us, 
is if you do what we call dollar productive activities, chances are that is you encouraging this value of financial sustainability. So the question here is, how do you measure the value of your work compared to the rewards you get? Because for so many people, they're like, well, I gotta make a million dollars tomorrow, but maybe right now your product or your service isn't quite qualitative yet. Maybe it's not yet priced at the right price uh, that it should be, because you still need to put in a bit more work in market research, etc. So do you value your overtime as part of your financial sustainability is part of my question here. Because too often some of us are not seeing some of our excess time we put into our business as actually an investment in our future skills. And the truth of the matter is, my friends, there was a time I used to have to run four hour workshop or two uh, four hour workshops yeah to get the same result but now we're doing it in half the time we're getting the same impact the same result because our skill development has gone up over the years so how do you measure your financial st sustainability number three this one's exciting growth this is one of my highest personal values as well are you committed to growth in all areas of your life some people just measure growth by bank account but i'm here to challenge you do you measure yourself by personal social psychic skill development for the purpose of self mastery and hopefully to reach your full potential in life so if i were to ask you <clears throat> maybe you can raise your hand if i can't see you here but who here feels they still have room to grow their full, full potential just a raise of hand if you feel you can still grow tomorrow more than you are today Okay, so that's most of us who put up our hand there because it just never ends. So imagine if you don't have growth as one of your values, chances are you're gonna be struggling. So it's a really important question to ask yourself. It's can you measure growth in personal life, social, psychic, and most importantly in your business for skill development? Because some things that used to take you four hours should over time take you two hours, for example. What, what's the difference? Skill development. So really harness that if you can. Okay, here's the quote for the month. It's always a quote for every month, but until I find something more compelling to share, <laughs> to change your mindset, but this one is really, really cool, particularly in this area called the acceleration program. So selling to people, people think they have to get out there, take their product or service and go sell it to people. But I'm here to say that really that I'm so glad to hear this because now there's so much noise online. So many people are selling everything. The bigger question isn't what, sorry, where to sell like Facebook, Google Analytics or wherever you want to go. Uh, Google AdWords, sorry. The question is, who is the ideal client? And who are you to sell to that ideal client? So the better, better quote here is selling to people who actually want to hear from you is a lot more effective than interrupting strangers that don't. So I really want you to kind of think about that quote when you're approaching your marketplace, whatever you do in your life, in your industry, is try and start asking yourself the question, who is the person that I'm targeting? And is this person pre-qualified that's actually going to love my product? Not just kind of like it, but love my product because they actually have a concern and they're educated enough to want to buy my product. So always think about that, okay? So now I'll uh, hand back to you guys. Uh, maybe what we're going to do quickly here is just get some of you, if you've just logged in, welcome. Uh, just introduce yourself through the chat just kind of put your name, the location, the business name, website link, anything that you have, promote, promote yourself out there because we're all gonna get a little 10 second uh, time to introduce ourselves and what we do. So before you do that, in case anyone finds you interesting and wanna connect with you, they can just go back to the chats and uh, you know say hi and connect with you or go to your website. So this is a good time for you to just kind of promote yourself. So if you don't have a Facebook a website, don't worry, put your Facebook, uh, handle, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't have to be pro professional, but you can put, I'm interested in starting a juice business or something, it makes no difference, but just get into the habit of promoting yourself and where you're from. So love to hear from you. Uh, so just quickly, if uh, all of us can just kind of do that now, uh, let me see if I can just say hi and check you guys out. Let's have a look. Okay. So Lisa's going ahead there, Germany. Rolls and Von Sharon. Did I say that right, Lisa? <laughs> I'm getting that. Okay. Yeah. Haji. Nearly. Okay. okay. By the time I introduce you, I'll be killer at it. Tasha, thanks for joining us. Maya, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, just share your website, Facebook page, whatever you got there. Nadia. Hey, cool. So, yeah, share your share your love over there. Thanks for joining us, guys. Cool, cool. All right, so I'll let that keep going and uh, we'll just continue there quickly. Okay, so while you're putting that, 
Uh, Tasha, we're waiting to hear from you too. Don't think you're hiding. You can uh, put doctor to cure sickle cell, maybe inventor to be, I don't know, you know, go crazy. Go crazy, awesome. Okay, I'll, I'll do this part as well. All right, so while you guys are sharing that, I uh, thought it'd be really super cool to give you guys an opportunity to just say a little bit about yourselves and we'll introduce you to the world. All right, so how about, uh, where's uh, Claudia? Is Claudia back or she's kind of not there? Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. Yeah, you're here. Okay, so maybe just if you don't mind taking a timer, 10 seconds, we're going yeah. to give everyone 10 seconds to just uh, introduce themselves and what they do. And then we'll go around the room, but I'll, I'll manage it. You just do the timing, yeah? Okay, so shall we start with the most important introducer of all time who's actually professionally trained to introduce people and has a baritone voice, MC voice, Haji himself with a nice new t-shirt. So Haji, how about you kick us off uh, to introduce who you are, your business, in 10 seconds if you like, go for it. Sure thing, welcome. <clears throat> Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 um, you go ahead. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, my name is Haji Basim. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I have a business called Holistic Methods, and we use this business to help connect people with their authentic ability to express their song with instruments. They're using me methods of meditation and elements of mindfulness. So, yeah. That was pretty quick. All right. You I'm on my, I'm on. And then you, you clap like this to celebrate your friend because you want some big up on your sign wall. You can do it. Haji style, just one click with your head off there. I, I kind of like that. All right, thanks for sharing that, Haji. Uh, next is Natasha. Natasha, Dr. T, you want to introduce yourself? Um, hello, everyone. My name is Natasha from Lusaka, Zambia. I am a medical student and also just launched my wedding planning business. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, well done. Good to see you. Nice. Is that the doctor outfit as well? Uh, so good branding there. Like it, like it. All right. Uh, next is, where is she? Here she is. Nadia. Is Nadia there? Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Nice okay, to... because the connection is very, very bad here. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Nadia. I'm, I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia. That's the capital of Indonesia. Um, my business is in ocean renewable. Uh, that is renewable energy from seawater. Um, Blumare Energy, that's the name. And then um, also um, just built an artisanal sea salt company called Mutir Sea Salt, also from Indonesia. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. We can't see you there, but I promise you guys, she looks like the photo. So that is Nadia. <laughs> awesome. Great, thanks for sharing. And Sarah, can you take this? I can't see you or hear you. Are you able to share your business, your pitch, your refined one? We know you've been practicing. Yes, I'm Sarah Mzai from Nairobi, Kenya. I am CEO of Piki Piki Solutions. Piki Piki is motorcycle in Kiswahili language. We give solutions to motorcycle operators and owners who need to make a little more money and also in need of mobility. Yeah. Awesome. Was that it? Yes, that is it. Okay. Sante sana. Thank you very much, Sarah from Kenya there. And uh, she's been working on her pitch, so that was pretty smooth. Thank you very much for sharing that. I like that. All right. Awesome. Okay. Next is Maya. Hi everyone, I'm sorry, no video from me tonight, but I guarantee I look just like my photo. <laughs> I was gonna say, we promise she looks like the photo. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi everyone, I'm Maya Michelle. Um, I'm calling in from Bali, Indonesia, and my company is Mind Body Soul Retreats. I'm a nutritionist and I help people with gain control of their health. Um, I work with people who are super fed up with over-the-counter drugs, yo-yo dieting, 
people who are confused about what to eat and are tired of getting stomach upset, constipation, diarrhea, or whatever digestive problems they have. So what I do is get people really to take charge of their health and understand their own unique biomes. Since I don't believe that there is one diet that's absolutely perfect for everyone. That's me. <laughs> Mind, body, soul retreats. Awesome. Yeah, you, you went for that one. I like the pain points in there. That was really cool. Well done. <laughs> nice. Really like that. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Okay, and next is uh, Eunice. Hi, everyone. My name is Eunice. I'm the COO for Tribe Heart. So Tribe Heart is an um, offline and online college that is based in Bali and in Zambia, and we offer programs for entrepreneurs and small businesses. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sharp. She's not related, so I'm not biased. Well done, Eunice. Awesome. Nice one. Great pitch. I like that. Okay, thanks for sharing. And I'm leaving the amazing new tribe member, Natalie, last. So next is Wina. Wina, are you ready? I think now you can hear me. All right. Hi, I'm Natalie from Brussels. Oh, you Natalie, should... you want to go? Okay, I was going to leave you last. I was just getting you warmer. But yeah, you go. You're ready to go. You do this. You do this. Take, take it. Take it. Take it. You should have warned people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie from Brussels, Belgium. I'm a fine artist and I make drawings with a feminist message because unfortunately, there's still a lot of work to be done. Thank you. Yeah, well said. All right, that one doesn't need any pitch practice. She's ready to go. So uh, well done, great pitch. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so uh, we'll leave Wina until last then and I'll go to CJ. Hi, Can't hear you. Uh, so hi guys, oh, no. uh, yeah. my name is CJ Kenyo from Nairobi, Kenya. This is um, CJ Kenyo from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm the founder of the Culinary Jester. It's a um, catering company. Um, we're all about food, fun, and more food. So, yeah, that's um, it for me. Thanks, guys. Awesome. awesome. Apparently, it makes a, a mean sauce. So we're yet to test it out when we get to Kenya, when we get there for the Simba tour or something. Nice one. Thanks, CJ. Thanks for sharing. Okay, uh, Wina, you ready? Is Wina here? Maybe not. Okay, we'll give her some time. All right. Uh, and uh, Claudia, you want to introduce yourself as well? I'll introduce you again later. Sure, sure. Well, I'm original from Mexico, but I was living in Australia, then moved Arizona. Now I'm trapped here in Brussels. Uh, I'm a trainer, coach, facilitator, so I love people. And I'm, um, well, I teach personal development and business development. So this is me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. All right, I think I've got uh, pretty much everyone here and uh, Wina, she joins us. I'll save Lisa for last because uh, she's got her own segment. So uh, be prepared to listen to her. Okay, I think that's everyone. Okay, great. Let's uh, get back to the it. So everyone kind of went under 10 seconds. So that was really good. And again, there's other platforms. We go up to 60 seconds uh, just to get your message across. So that's the sort of stuff we teach. So well done, guys. Everything kind of came out flow and not so forced. So that was really, really perfect. Okay, cool. Let us begin. So now up to the part we call the Shine Week. Shine Week? Shine Month. Sorry, Shine Week is on Facebook. Shine Month. So this is where anyone here in the group can share. It's almost like a headline. Instead of a negative headline on the newspaper, we're looking for some positive stories. So this is for the month of March that's gone. It's uh, anything from 1st of March to the end of March, whatever day that was, uh, if anyone in the group 
refer the client to someone in the group or refer to someone you can say yeah well you know i referred this person to because this is more like the give and take kind of thing so we want to really encourage givers so we like to celebrate you if you referred the second part is if you had a deal done or you received a deal from some client came over the line that you've been working on and people like natalie for example or a few others you see who are new to this tribe uh you know People like Maya in a few weeks ago might have closed the deal and she doesn't tell anyone. So we force her to embarrass herself and celebrate herself here by saying, yep, I made this deal happen. And we clap because a lot of us are working really, really hard. But where do we go to get acknowledged, right? So this is a place we want you not to just criticize yourself, but try and find a way to celebrate yourself as well, okay? So that's what we call a deal done. So that means it doesn't matter if it was $2, $1,000. A deal is a deal and we celebrate you if it happened in the month of March. Uh, the, the third is if you have a testimonial. I definitely have a few testimonials. Uh, some of you are using your products. Some of you I'm uh, signing up to some of your programs soon. So I've got a lot of good things to say about that user experience you gave me. And uh, I think that's always nice to share here because again, when you're out there just with another customer, you know, they don't know what they don't know about what you enjoyed. Yeah. So leave the criticism for another time. But here's a place to just go. I, I enjoy this part of the aspect uh, that this person offered me. Then the last one is one-to-one uh, -one meetings. That's where, you know, you, you're encouraged in this group to actually network with each other, call each other up if you're curious. Some of you maybe one day were trying to go to the Serengeti or go to Kenya or go somewhere, you know, call up CJ, call up Sarah, say, hey, let's connect, let's have a chat over Zoom, e-coffee, whatever you want to call it. Talk a bit of business, but talk also a little bit about uh you know what's out there maybe you, you guys could become traveling buddies in the future you just never know or maybe some of you want to check out the tripod in zambia so I'll call you and she can give you the lowdown of what's happening in the, on the ground there and uh, tell you what's what so if you want to set up something uh you know these are just doorways so we really encourage you to start measuring how many one-to-one -one meetings you have so does anyone outside maya maya your hand is permanently up so i don't know if that's for you to share but I will now hand back to you guys. Does anyone have a share of a referral deal done for the month of uh, March that they would like to share? Just put your hand up or put a little message up and then I'll let you share. Okay, we start with Lisa, go ahead. Sure, um, I had a referral called uh, Natalie, uh, who was a friend of mine and I'm really, really excited that she's joining us here now. And that's my referral. And thank you, Natalie, for coming. Came by storm. So yeah, thanks for that. That was really amazing, Lisa. Appreciate that for sure. Okay, anyone else have a referral or deal done or one-to-one -one or some headline or something amazing that happened uh, to them in the tribe they'd like to share? Otherwise, I'll embarrass you. I know some of you done really well. Okay, Haji, I'm picking on you now. So Haji had some great success in some of his deals done in the month of March. I think your biggest month yet. So do you want to uh, share that? Is Haji there? You're on mute, man. Okay, sorry about that. Um, uh, do to the last system I was that TribeHut offered me, I was able to learn some skills as far as how to facilitate a pre-launch. And I have a group pre-launch where I'm helping people go through a ukulele course to learn how to turn their personal affirmations into songs. And I've sold out. I was going for eight people and I have eight people signed up for the course starting next week. So that's a win for me. That was wicked, man. Crushed it. <laughs> Crushed it. No, well done. That's really good. That's really good. Good to hear. Okay. And uh, anyone else want to share? I won't embarrass anyone else because I know everything about everybody. Going once, going twice. Okay, cool. All right. We'll leave it there for today. I know who you are, but I'll leave you there for, for, to, to simmer for next month. Okay. So uh, next is us going to moving swiftly along is moving on to the most important part. So I will get to that. So this is where we come to hear from the amazing Lisa 
Dur, did I say that right? Dur, yeah. yeah? It's okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm working on the accent. And uh, she's part of Rose Von Sharon, which is a jewelry brand. Absolutely love the elegance of it, uh, sustainability of it. But the most important thing is the heart, I think, that Lisa has portrayed from the minute I met her. She came actually referred by Maya, and we were talking about the impact she wanted to make by doing conscious jewelry, making sure that the materials were well sourced and coming from supportive channels and really encouraging artistry. So I met her and she's done a few programs with us, but the biggest thing I wanted to say about Lisa that you may not know is I think she's got one of the biggest hearts uh, in this space and definitely one of those people who is really vigilant, disciplined, organized and really refers uh, some just goes over and beyond what you guys expect. So for example, you know, we'll do some sessions and I might have a conversation about some particular topic, should we recommend a book? You know, she's just that type of giver. So I really am looking forward to hearing more about her story. And uh, I hope you guys also get to enjoy in nine minutes, uh, someone who is not only uh, walking, you know, talking about jewelry and trying to make a name for herself, but she's also walking the talk in trying to make a difference as she goes. So a uh, big round of applause for Lisa, our feature presenter for uh, our month of uh, April. And over to you, Lisa. Thank you. I will start with sharing my screen. So can everyone see that? The delay? Yeah, as you said. So um, yeah, I will start with my business name. It's Rose von Sharon. Um, and I got the idea from my father, actually. He wanted to give me this name when I was born, but sadly he was not allowed to. So, um, um, but when I later heard the story, I thought the name is so beautiful. And then I knew I wanted to use it for my, uh, for my business. And underneath I have my slogan, it's called embrace your nature with sustainable jewelry. And for me, embracing really comes from caressing, like hugging, but also expressing yourself, expressing your own nature, but also because the jewelry is very inspired by nature, it's like also double meaning in here. And in order to, uh, to, to help that nature, it's very sustainable. I, don't, I do want to protect it. A little bit about me. Um, yeah, my name is Lisa Dörrer. It's, <laughs> I guess, very hard for foreigners or English speaking people to pronounce. Uh, I'm a goldsmith and I'm the owner of Rose von Sharon. I was born in Zollenroda, which is in East Germany. And since then I've lived in, in Bali, I've lived in Canada, and now at the moment I'm in Hamburg in Germany. I've been a vegetarian for more than 20 years and now um, I'm a vegan for a few years and I really see myself as an environmentalist, like nature is very important to me. And I really like being outdoors, I like being in nature and I also really like arts. So in every city that I visit, uh, the first thing I do is going to the art museum and in this way I like to get to know the culture of this country or the city a bit better and as you can see on the picture I am a really passionate sailor and I'm actually a certified skipper um, in Canada. A little bit about my background and my experience uh, so it all started with my mother who's a goldsmith and I've just watched her working I thought it was so um, for me it was like so crazy to see like gold and the stones and fire like all of that, that this could be work actually and working with my hands. So um, because of her, I started and now I'm a goldsmith for more than 15 years. I've learned my, uh, my uh, trade in, in Pforzheim, which is the jewelry city of Germany. Like 80% of the jewelry in Germany used to be made there at the time at least. Um, and I've since then worked in all kinds of departments all around jewelry businesses. So I've been a production manager, a jewelry production consultant as well, and also in development management and um, just like hands on like a workshop manager. And what I found most exciting about the job was really working with uh, just very new things, experimenting and trying new techniques, trying yeah, new tools, new materials. So whenever there was anything available, 
in any company. I was like, oh, I want to try this. Let's see how this works. And so I, um, yeah, mostly ended up in any development department <laughs> of the companies, and I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, that's also what I did in the, at Vendorf, which you can see at the bottom left. Um, so there I've worked as a model maker and also experimenting a little bit on new ideas. In the center, you'd see a picture uh, where I'm just uh, polishing a ring, like the final polishing. And on the right side, you can see a picture of, uh, from John Hardy, where I worked as a production development manager, which was also super exciting. Uh, like we would get uh, ideas from our designers, they would come to us and then we would have to figure out like how someone can move a certain way or create a certain class or something um, like that would work as they wanted. So it was <laughs> always very exciting. Um, then what is important to me, what do I really care about? Um, so what I've really noticed is that in the jewelry industry, there is hardly anything uh, sustainable or caring uh, in the way um, to understand where is everything coming from, like where are the metals coming from. So I've just did my, some research by myself. I did ask some questions and I joined seminars about this. And uh, the sad thing is that gold and silver um, is coming um, from mining industries that do cause harm. Cause harm. Um, and um, not only that, there's also some greenwashing where some uh, jewelers or brands would say they have like a sustainable jewelry, but then if I look a bit closer, I don't find it that sustainable at all. And um, so that's also a sad part about this. And I, I've just decided I'm, I'm making my own rules. I want to do it in a way that I feel comfortable working. And for example, I want to use only recycled metals that I can really trace back. And also I would like to educate others and just get people to ask questions when they buy jewelry, just as we already do with food or clothing where there's an awareness there already to ask like, where is this coming from? Who made this? Like this can also be done in jewelry wherever you buy it. And on the right side, you see um, an image of people protesting in Papua New Guinea, uh, where I've been a few times, so I can really <laughs> I feel a bit related to the people there and, um, yeah, they are demonstrating against an Australian mining company. And a bit about the business and how I see that. Um, so I want to have quite a like, smaller business um, because I want to have a team that I know. And like I like the feeling of a smaller business where everyone knows each other, like kind of a familiar feeling. And on the left side, you see there it's a small jewelry workshop with a lower profit and going to through the arrow, a small jewelry business with great profit, that's where I want to go. And the obstacles on the left, you see that I have found working in small workshops and also huge uh, industry productions, I found I could compare all of that a little bit. And I see in the smaller businesses, usually it's in very ineffective production. There's one of a kind, hardly any repeating tasks. Uh, there's often no, no mindset there to even understand the business. And then most of the focus is really on the bench time, the goldsmithing, and hardly ever stepping out of the frame to look at the business itself. So the strategy that I have is to have a more effective production with limited additions and with that repeating tasks. I want to have a lean approach and also that is, which is coming from the lean approach, but also to just really never stop learning, always growing in that part. And I see myself as a business leader who is also a goldsmith. And I want to focus on all of the elements of the business. And here's a little bit about what really inspires me. And that is nature. And as you can see, I have some images of leaves, the way they curl. And that for me, that's something just very beautiful. I also really love looking at surfaces or structures, like you can see uh, on the wood or on the water. When I see that, I just want to put that on a ring or something, I just really like to look at that. And this is a little bit about what the jewelry can look like. On the left, you can see a little sketch that I've done. It's just a leaf just to see how it will um, show on a neckline what it would look like, and which is what I'm starting with. Uh, before I make um, any jewelry, I would always make a sketch and just to see the proportions and so on. And on the right side, you can see a ring um, that I've done uh, or, or designed actually for another company. Um, and that is really inspired by uh, Driftwood because um, I've, I've found that um, I'm so many times at the beach. And for me, there's a big connection to the West Coast of Canada where I used to live. 
and I just find it to be very beautiful. And on this ring, you can also see a little bit about um, the surfaces that I'm going for, which will make the jewelry a little unique, which is like a combination of the matte and shiny parts. Like in the center, you see a bit more matte and wider structures and outside it's very polished. And that is kind of what I want to, what I'm going to go with, with the jewelry. Yeah, I'm coming a little bit towards the end already, a little summary about the business. Um, so I want to have a small jewelry business. I really want to focus on the high quality and very functional jewelry. And yeah, I want to focus on sustainability and efficient work processes. And I want to have, or I'm going to have beautiful designs created by me, but also I'm very welcoming and any other designers or people who have some ideas um, or also in general through customer feedback. I want to create jewelry that people really like wearing. My values are around responsibility, growth, and compassion. And for my next steps, I'm going to launch uh, three new designs this year. I am going to move into a bigger workshop and I wanna create a routine in my operations. That's just where I'm at at the moment. And a little bit about what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, like-minded people, people who feel they have some ideas or they feel they can cooperate in any way coming from an environmental perspective or any other ideas. I'm very open to that, of course, designers or jewelry lovers, shops, people who have some space uh, where they can present something. And also, of course, goldsmiths, anyone who feels like they want to be part of this. And um, yeah, already at the end, <laughs> um, I will repeat the name a few times because it's so hard to pronounce. So uh, again, like I'm Lisa Dora and the name is Rose von Charon. Uh, you can uh, reach me through the email info at rosefoncharon.com or Instagram rosefoncharon, Facebook also rosefoncharon and the website www.rosefoncharon.com. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. Awesome. I love it. So before we let you go, you can keep your contact up. Uh, there for a little while. We just have a few uh, questions for you. I, I have a few, but before I jump in there, does anyone, well, firstly, great presentation and definitely did it in under, under time, but uh, does anyone have uh, any, we, we call the gifts for, uh, for Lisa? Could be something you liked about the presentation. It could be something that you resonated or maybe you had a referral, it makes no difference, but just something that we could gift her that maybe you could take away, that she could take away, it's going, this was something that you really appreciated. So anyone wanna share any verbal uh, feedback, positive please, or, or something that you really resonated with? And then I'll ask a few couple of questions just to clarify a few things. Anyone have anything to say? I can't actually see anyone. Uh, oh, go ahead, freestyle. I can't see you guys now. Uh, I'll go and start, Lisa. That was amazing. This is probably my third time hearing it. And every time I learn something new from it, I have one question, if I could mind asking real quick, is why couldn't your father call you Rosa Von Sharon? Yeah. I'll take my <laughs> yeah, good question. In East Germany, there was a list kind of, of names that you were allowed to give, and that was not on that list. <laughs> Oh, wow. So people weren't allowed to, well, had to pick from the list of names to give. Is that right? Yeah, or they, they couldn't go with anything. It was, yeah. Oh, wow. They were allowed to use the name and they weren't, yeah. Never heard that before. Okay, that's interesting. That's really, really insightful. Anyone have anything else to say or share or something they got out of it that they really enjoyed? I saw some wows and all this. Maybe you could say it verbally. That would be good. Uh, I can't actually see anyone, so just go for Me? it. Me? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Sarah, um, no. Rose or Sharon, how is Lisa? I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> ah, I'm so confused with all the names. Okay, that's good. So Lisa, I just want to say that what is very good is that, you know, I mean, this is a really good example of how I mean, it's a lot of jewelry people or a lot of jewelry places all around the world. But 
how you can be very niche and very target and then maybe you can create a uniqueness on your brand is very beautiful because you are expressing not only expressing that you really admire the nature and you protect that, but as well, you walk the talk. So you integrate the nature in your designs and all of that. And I think this will be beautiful, really, really beautiful. And maybe an idea, I don't know if you have it already, but an idea could be that also, it's a lot of people that they are very creative that maybe you can do a workshops for normal people that they maybe come in, join their designs, join everything. And maybe you create an exhibition at the end of the month so people can sell all the jewelry. And, and then these workshops, you can start to attract people all around the world. So you create a workshop like maybe for four week four days or three days or whatever and at the end you do the exhibition and people from different places the street come in and they sell what they create and this would be beautiful and maybe you can put a uh, topic so you can put um some theme you no know, with the nature around it and would be very good because you will also attract community maybe i'm not a designer or I'm not a jewelry person, but I would love to go to workshop like that, you know, how to make a ring or how, and also I'm learning about the metals, I'm learning about nature, I'm learning and I'm sharing my creativity with other people and I'm not necessarily, I'm an artist and I'm just sharing for a couple of days and, and you know, I think it will be a really, really good, so I love it. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Great idea. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to have, like, that's a good way also of understanding what it is that people would like to wear and help me understand what I can produce um, for, so people would have something that they actually want and that it's not only me thinking, like, this is really nice, but for people to be like, this is really cool, this is what I want. So, yeah, that would be a really nice way. Thank you. Nadia has her hand up, so Nadia, oh, okay, yeah. would you like Go ahead, me? Nadia. Thanks. Nadia. Maybe, maybe not. No, maybe not. Okay, maybe she'll come She's back. Muted. What's up? I'll take place. She yeah, can go. go after me. Okay, Maya, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> go ahead. We have a good enough relationship that I can do that. Um, hey, Lisa. So, wow, that was a excellent presentation only the second time I heard it and it was still super interesting and like Haji I still learned more things about you even though I've known you for I think almost nine years now um or did I anyway who cares anyway um it was really awesome and, and you know one of the things that I really appreciated about your presentation is that you you really are one of the one of the few people I know who's starting a new business and you're really walking your talk in the sense that you have a strong passion for preserving the earth and living in harmony with not only the earth, but all of the beings that live on the earth as well. And so I love how you included that and really integrated that deeply in your presentation, your journey of figuring out how your and your expertise with goldsmithing um, revealed a lot of um, disharmonious uh, practices and how you want to start, how you have begun your own business and you plan to maintain um, your, your um, ecological, uh, ecological stance in promoting your jewelry and in creating your jewelry and, and also in educating other people who, cons who like to buy jewelry in um, purchasing, purchasing these, these pieces, but without, um, without, without having a, a, an impact that, that hurts other people or other beings or puts the earth in, in uh, disharmony. So um, 
I just want to like, you know, bring that to highlight because there are so many products and so many, um, so many products that are being sold, so many businesses that are opening and people, as you say, greenwash, pretend like they care about the environment, but in the end, they 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 don't, um, you know, they don't really follow through completely with all of their practices. So that's what I have to contribute. Thanks so much, Lisa. Mm. Thank you. Very Thank you good point. Very good point. I like that greenwash. I've actually never heard that before. Is that is that a term you guys came up with in your crew, or is that kind of all over the place? Um, I hear it a lot in the clothing industry where there are a lot of documentaries about that um, and there they use that word very often. Uh, greenwash, okay. And then I think we'll just, because we're gonna do the breakout soon, but uh, just one final uh, question for me, Lisa. Um, yeah, I'll put you on the spot, why not? If you've been on the journey long enough. So if you were to perhaps, you know, give advice to the younger self of who you were, say five, three, four years ago with what you know now, the values you have now, your belief system and walking this path, what would be the advice you'd give your younger self about your brand? Um, I guess that I did have all of that in me already um, or that I do have things in me to do what I want to do or where I want to go. It's all in me and I didn't, there was no waiting needed. Um, I mean, it was good to have the last years then to learn uh, a bit more about the sustainable jewelry, which is what I did in the last five years. But uh, with what I wanted, I could have just had the courage earlier to start this, like I had the tools already. Um, just uh, yeah, to trust myself a bit more in that and going with my guts and feelings, yeah. Uh, that's perfect job well said and i think uh we all could relate to that so i uh, just wanted to honor you again to say thank you for taking the time and uh, having the guts to start now and now is the right time for you and uh really really excited to see the impact that you're already making not just in our tribe but also how ballsy it takes i think for someone to really stand the ethical path and not just the profitable path because i think it's quite a tight rope to walk particularly in your space yeah as you were sharing so to be a pioneer for, for that standard i think is admirable so well done and uh, thank you so much again for taking the time to present and uh, yeah definitely be watching this presentation again so thank you lisa and yep big round of applause for lisa guys gonna move on to the next one thank you so much lisa i really appreciate that um yeah cool cool oh and uh i think we have Geneve in our midst. I don't know, Geneve, if you want to say hi and just quickly introduce yourself. I know you're logged in from somewhere. We haven't seen you in a while. If you're still here and can talk, if not, uh, we'll go to the next section. I am around. Um, hi, everybody. I'm driving, so I'm in traffic <laughs> at the moment. Okay. <laughs> so I thought I'd just, I'd just tune in and listen. Okay. So um, I, I am very much here. And, you know, brilliant presentation. I sort of caught um, the middle towards the end of it. Um, but brilliant presentation. I mean, I'm all for sustainability. It's um, one of the sort of key themes that I've been looking into quite recently. And I think whatever I choose to do business-wise would always have to have a sustainable element to it. So, you know, credibility definitely to Lisa for that. And thank you for sharing. Mm, thank you for logging in from England. Thanks, Jenny. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, so what do we do next? So some of you have already shared some gifts of acknowledgement, you shared some uh, contribution of how you felt or thought or uh, gave ideas to Lisa, that's really, really helpful. And the most strategic way you can do that now is we have this link, you can copy it or I'll probably drop it into the chat. It's just where we sort of do us a solid. So this is where if you've heard an introduction or seen someone pitch or present and you wanna connect with that person, you use this link, put in your details and tell us who you want to, us to connect you, you with and we'll basically pass that information on to that person and they'll choose to contact you. So uh, just copy that link and I'll put it in the group uh, later for, for you guys to use, It'd be an easier way for you to connect with everyone else. Okay, so now for the last part of our journey together, I would like now to introduce Claudia. 
Uh, Claudia is our facilitator, and as you know, she's stuck in Belgium. She's originally from Mexico, but uh, we met in Australia 10, no, more, more than 10 years ago. And it's been a real great honor having her here, bringing her expertise, and also just sharing some ideas on how we can improve some of our experiences together here online until we get offline again. So uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to hand over for this part with Campfire, which is where we can identify some of our constraints. And uh, she's going to do some exciting things, including some new ways we can break out and hopefully have uh, an hour together before we close just to see if we can actually address some of your issues. So over to you, Claudia. Thank you very much for taking over. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. So how many of you up to here have been learned about Lisa and about the sharings that the other, others did? How many yeah. of you, right? How many of you are ready to now share between you guys and support each other. Who really wants to do that? Yay. I don't see all the hands, so it's but it's good. I believe you, I believe you that you are answered to me, so I'm happy. Well, uh, I will explain to you what we will be doing this, okay? We will put it in a rooms, and the activity that we are doing is the following. Well, first part is the identifying what is the constraints, okay? How to grow your brand now in this new situation, okay? In this new planet. So let's go to start with the next one, Aaron. And a couple of rules that I would like to ask you, please. Number one, grab your iPad, grab your pen, because we are doing first an exercise all together here. And then when you finish, we are putting in the groups. You will share in the groups and then we we'll support each other. OK, so everybody, because, you know, sometimes our memory can fail. So that's why paper and also when you have something in your mind, it's better to put it in writing so you can disattach to the problem, disattach to the situation and it's better for you to see. And the number two is balance two-way sharing. Who can tell me what does mean balance in two-way sharing? Or any idea of what this is this? Please unmute um, yourself and just share with us. What does it mean for you? Even if you don't know, try to guess. Who would like to guess with us? What is balance two-way sharing? Someone, someone volunteer? Come on, guys. Here is not a bad, a good answer. We are learning all together. Lisa, yep. yes? Um, I guess it would give um, the person that I'm talking to the same time and attention that I am wanting or getting from that person. Yes, it's a, it's a kind of two-way sharing. Yes, it is important. How many of you think it's important that when someone is sharing to us, it's good to listen. And of course, we should listen and respect the other people, right? Yeah, this is super, super important. So thank you. Yeah, the balance to way sharing is exactly that. Is we will share and you will have the opportunity that one share to the other person and the other person share with you. So I would like that you please, please be very present listen very carefully what the other people saying and then be open be respectful okay the number three is we will sharing solutions and suggestions okay so be open please if you are giving a, 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 a solution or suggestion it's just a it's just sharing with the other person okay so don't take personal don't take that is good or no it's not good um so it's just a sharing, okay? And sometimes when we have a problem, we can see the problem because we are like a, the fish on the water, right? Like, where is the water? I can see the water because we are into the water. So that's why the first part will be identify the problem, okay? And then we will discuss and solve and you will share with each other. What is the problem? And everybody will listen. And then you will share solutions for that problem, okay? And we will do it with everyone in the group, okay? The next point is, please, 
the next point. No ranting, okay? Please be very, very respectful. And this is also with the uh, rule number five. So if you want to put it, Aaron, thank you. So be respectful for everyone, okay? If you are giving a um, uh, point of view, suggestions, feedback, whatever, I'm doing with the heart and the person that is receiving, it's okay if it doesn't apply for you or you think it's not a good idea, it's okay, but say thank you and take it. And maybe later on you can apply it, who knows, okay? But just be open mind, sharing and give and, and, and uh, give and receive because sometimes how many of you love to give help to others? Yeah, how many of you, raise your hand, how many of you love to give help? And how many of you are not really good on receive help, right? Or asking for help? Because when we need to ask for help, we are not, oh no, I, I don't know what they think about it. I don't know if I need, I, they will say that I'm weak, that I can do it. And no guys, okay, we don't know everything. Okay, and we are not perfect. So we need to each other, we need to support. And sometimes, as I mentioned before, when you are in the problem, you can see, you can see things that others that has another perspective and they are not attached to that problem or that they have their heart attached to that project, they can see more easier. Okay, yeah, everybody thumbs up saying yes, 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 thumbs up. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, chat, chat, uh, put in the chatting yes. If you are with me, I just want to say, if you are with me, chat, chat, chat. Okay, beautiful. Well, let's go to go to the first part. So everybody has their pen and pencil and paper or iPad. Okay, beautiful. So please write down 10 problems that you personally are facing right now with your brown in this situation. And I know that for some countries are more difficult situation than others because the lockdown, I know that Bali is more open and you still can meet in people, but I know that in Germany, in Brussels, in other places we are locked down, so it's not easier. So please write down 10 problems. I mean, doesn't need to do make a detail. You just put the topic or put two, three um, letters or words so you know what is the problem, okay? And when you finish, uh, when you finish, please raise your hand, okay? So everybody write very quick, 10 problems. Could be, any type of problems could be very insignificant problems that you think is insignificant, but for others, others could be big. So write it down, any, any problems. And if you don't know, and you are like, oh, what problem, what problem? Think, think what happened if you know the problem? Or think what could be a future problem? Or what is the problem that is, is you try to resolve for many, many years ago and you still have that problem. And could be maybe you as a person, as a leader, as a business owner, could be maybe that your personal or the people that work for you is having the same problems and then you have a lot of rotation of personal or could be your brand or could be your company so write down, could be financial problems, could be maybe physical problems, could be monetary problems, could be people problems, client problems, system problems, productivity problems, um, is any type marketing problems, sales problems, uh, social media problems. Think in all the areas of your business. Put all the hats, put as a business owner, put, put maybe in as an employee, put as a supervisor, or put as a client as well. Put all the hats on and discover what is the problem. And if you finish, raise your hand 
or put in the chat, I'm done. So then I know how many people finish. And once again, don't need to that write down all the problem, just put like the topic or the theme or the title of the problem or two, three words that you know what is the problem, okay? So two, two more minutes to finish it up. So run, 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 run. Who has already 10 problems? At least five problems. Raise your hand. Tash, yeah? Well done, good. Okay. If you have more, write more, okay? But at least, at least, if you, if you can think on 10 problems, at least have eight, seven, okay? Lisa, you are done? Good. Tash, you are done? Good. Eunice, Maya, Natalie, the rest, please. Put in the chat box if you are done. Janine, I know that you are driving, but maybe you can maybe think on some problems. And if you are done, you can unmute yourself and say done. Natalie, Maya, one more minute. One more minute. At least five, at least, at least, at least, okay? Yeah? How is everybody? Talk to me, guys, in the chat or on mute. Maya, how many you have? Maya, Natalie, Eunice, how many you have? Natalie. So, Someone can see the chat? Is they typing or they still writing problems? Oh, okay, 10, eight. Okay, well, the majority you're done. Okay, beautiful. So let's go to the next part. Second thing that you are doing. So I want that you look this list that you have and zero will be very low. I mean, the pain, the problem is low. It's a problem, but it's not very, very oriental, it's not like too much pain. And 10 will be very painful. That right now is really creating a huge, huge problems in your company or for you, or it's like, you know, the rock in the shoes that is just right now giving you a lot of problems. So marking in there one by one, zero to 10, okay? Don't think too much, just think on the problem, on the pain that is maybe causing you, maybe causing, maybe you are the problem and you are causing to your employees, okay, sometimes. <laughs> so put the number, put the number there, okay? So that's good. If you don't, please put done in the chat box. So I know that everybody's finished. Put don, 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 so I know. So zero, one, two, well, still tolerant. You know, it's like think on a headache or think on a stomach pain, okay? Maybe one, two, still don't take any medicines or any tea, but four, five, I still, you know, now I'm, I'm not feeling good, I'm 10. Nine, eight is really, I need to take medicines or aspirins, or maybe, maybe I need to go to bed, or maybe I need to go to the doctor because it's really bad. That is what it is, okay? Okay, Janice, Natalie, Don, well done. Okay, what about Maya, say hi, say Jai? Tasha, good. Janice, okay. All right, guys, next, let's go to pass to the next one. Organize, identify what is the tip 
the top three. What is the most, most three of them that is very painful? What are the three of them? Mark them, put it in a square, put like an asterisk, maybe put double check, okay? Or put it in a circle. So read very quick. And the ones that has a high level is your top three, okay? Everybody done? Yeah? Thumbs up? Yep, beautiful. Okay, number four. Okay, number four. So I want that you identify what is really the issue? What is the root cause? Maybe I will, I will give you an example. Maybe I said, oh, I'm not punctual and punctuality is giving me problems with the clients. Yeah, this could be my problem, but this is not the root of the problem. This is not the root of the cause. What is the root of the cause is that I have a poor time management or I don't know how to manage my agenda. This could be the root. And maybe if I still asking me why, why I'm not good on that, then will give me another that is deeper and deeper. So ask yourself on these three points, what is the root cause? What is the really issue that is creating this problem? And ask yourself, what? What is this or why? Why I have this problem? because of that and why I have in this because of that and why so more wise you ask you will get the real cause the real root because remember the first answer we had is the easiest answer oh I'm not punctual yeah well this is the excuse this is the results but why you are not punctual oh because I don't know how to manage my time yeah why you don't know how to manage your time how is causing the lack of that? Maybe it's a lack, lack of some abilities. Maybe it's the lack of delegation. Maybe it's the lack of um, financial. Maybe it's the lack of something. What is lacking, okay? So everybody's good. And if not, don't worry because in the groups, you will find out as well, okay? Number five, the next, the next thing. Okay, now I would like that you share, okay? Share with others. I will put it in the room and I will, I will give you two minutes per person, okay? I will put the rules in here. It's two minutes per person. So everybody has two minutes to share what is the problem, the three problems. And then everybody will give feedback, okay? And then we will change to the next person. So each person will have four minutes. So in total, we will have 12. I will put you in rooms of three. Okay. So ready? So you don't, you just need to press the blue button when appear in there. And if you are not yet in a groups, it's because maybe you come later, but I will put you in a groups. Okay, ready? And go. Okay, go, go, go to your rooms. Okay, who is missing? So, Geneve, I will put her. Okay. Um, no. Because sometimes when they are. Welcome, 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 welcome. How was it? Good? Was good? Good session? Okay. Time was short. <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe. Sometimes it's very short, right? We want to, especially when we want to share with our problems and everything. So I don't know what happened with the rest. Maybe because some people join us via Zoom and all of that, we lost them. I didn't, I didn't know that. So 
we don't have half of the team, I don't know, team come back, join us again, or join us via Zoom Live. But I would like to, that you share with us what happened. Any of the good shares that you have the opportunity, who would like to share? Who would like to share? Natalie, would like to... love to share. Okay, Natalie. <laughs> and Jenny, Jenny also. <laughs> Okay, Natalie, share with us. Um, okay, here. Yeah. A little technical problem in the beginning until we got in the room, but so I was in a room with CJ and Lisa, and um, so we all laid down our major issues at the moment, um, at least the one that we're feeling are most important. And um, yeah, we didn't have enough time, but I think we're able to give CJ a few hints and indications what he might want to consider. And then basically I was told that the course that I'm following at the moment will solve all my problems. So <laughs> uh, no pressure. <laughs> basically, basically knows what she has to do and she'll just start doing it now. Uh, awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> How many of you, how many of you see the value that when you share with the others your problem is easier and you can see the problem from different perspectives, right? Because we are so into the problem that we can see the things that others can see in an easier way. Or maybe some of you have been having the same problems and for you are like, oh, that is easy. Don't worry anymore. You know, I know how to do it, right? So beautiful, um, Jenny. You want to? Yeah, I think I think um, what we sort of realised is that no no one's problem is unique. So, like you say, that you know the issue that I have, somebody across the other side of the world will have the same problem. Um, I think in the group, myself and Tasha. I mean, what we sort of identified is that because we're both studying, we've had to prioritise our work because. Obviously, I'm coming to the end of my course. Tasha's got another two years left at med school. So it means that we're not able to focus as much energies or time into the whole idea or business concept that we have. So, you know, it's difficult to find a balance when you've got something so personal that you need to focus on. So I think... So the advice that we gave to her was that, you know, it's a really difficult situation that she's in because med school for her is crucial and we want her to succeed. So if she's not able to find the time or the energies to put into the business, then it's fine for her to park that and then come back to it at a time when she can actually give it more energy and focus. And I think in doing that, it's important to not feel that you failed because I think, you know, I applaud her for what she's doing. So I mean, it'd be a great career. And I think what we sort of came to is that perhaps when she goes back into the whole idea of business again, she may come up with another idea that is more in line with medicine or kind of like a natural transition from being a doctor into some sort of career um, that doesn't feel so detached from what she's currently doing. So that's kind of where we're at because we're at sort of very similar places at the moment. I think for me, um, the studying that I'm doing that I'll finish in the summer is more aligned in the line of business that I want to go into. Um, so for me, in the next couple of months, I'll be ready to go kind of full speed ahead. Um, one of the similarities that myself and Eunice found in terms of a difficulty is around marketing. And I think coming out of the um, current pandemic now, where people and businesses have shut down, just limited resources for people to invest in training, um, you know, how we sort of get around that. Um, the only suggestion I had really was probably offering some sort of free incentive to get people in and then adding value or selling the value of the services that you have to kind of get them engaged. And that's pretty much it. Wow, thank you very much. Very good, very good. So how many of you feel as well that your problems are not unique, that like Geneve says that maybe other people around the world 
is having the same problems as you, right? And how many of you check that also sometimes we want to achieve, achieve, achieve and do a lot of things and we try to, we, we feel like a rat, you know, running, running, running and all this and the day and working hard and study hard and putting in the business and it's not time that lasts forever, right? And we are running out of energy, right, sometimes. But in these cases, I would like, guys, that you, and this is a very beautiful exercise that I would like to share with you. When you go to sleep to bed, write down all the things that you achieve for the day, okay? Because sometimes we are so focused on the top of the mountain you know, I need to go to the top of the mountain. And if we don't go to the, we, that day we didn't reach the top, we are so frustrated. But what happened with the rest of the mountain? What happened with all the way that take you to go almost to the top? Because this is the important things. The important things is the small steps that we are taking day by day. Because I bet you, Tash, that you are not, the same as the last week. I bet you that you are, you are bigger as a person, as a doctor, as a anything, right? And every one of us, we are the same. Why? Because every day we learn something thing, new. Every day we confront some problems. We resolve some problems. We met new people. We learn from each other. So we are not the same people. So. I would like that you really do that exercise or write down all the achievements that you have been done in the past because we forgot. We are so angry and so frustrated with the things that we are not achieving today. But what happened with all the things that you have been achieved in the past? So make a list and I will bet you that you have been doing amazing things. Okay, so every time that you are frustrated, every time that you feel like I'm not good enough, I'm not doing good, I know, think, breathe, first breathe, and think what have been you doing in the past two weeks, in the past weeks, in the past days, okay? Yeah, and, and yeah, and this is a good, so everybody, a round of applause, that's awesome. And what about in the other group? What about with Eunice, uh, Lisa? What about you guys? What happened in your group? Who want to share? I was mm -hmm. in the group with uh, Natalie mm -hmm. and we were helping CJ. <laughs> okay. And then it was already the end of the of our time. Mm -hmm. I hope it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, do you want to give another, any other advice to him? I can give you a few seconds so you can share with him something. Uh, well, no, I think we were done. I, I think he had some things that he wants to try now or he wrote a few things down. No, I think we're good. <laughs> okay, beautiful, beautiful. Well, um, I just want to say thank you. How many of you feel that this exercise is really powerful? Yeah? Yes? How many of you would like to have more time next time, a little bit more time to achieve more, yes? Okay, so we will create more time, okay? So you can, you can still work in on this. So these sessions will be for you. And I hope that the rest of you that are watching us on Facebook or whatever you are, join us because we can help each other, okay? And look guys, you have this amazing tribe that really, really is, I mean, is good. So if you have any problem, why not put it in the tribe? Hey guys, I'm facing this problem, who can help me? And I bet you that everyone will jump in with good ideas, okay? So don't be ashamed to be like, oh, what if I ask for help? They will see me like a weak. No, no, weak is that you having a problem and you want to face it by yourself. That is weakness. That is weakness. Because remember, to be a good leader, sometimes you don't know everything because we are not perfect. Otherwise, everybody will not need for everybody, right? But we 
are in a place that we need to each other. When we burn, we need our parents. And when we are old, we need our kids, so people around us to support us, but in the middle as well, in the middle as well. And also we are limiting, limited because our body is water, right? So if you think that that's why we can be in a place that is too cold, because otherwise we will frozen, right? Or we can be in a place that is too hot because maybe we can evaporate. So we need to each other, we need to help to each other. So ask for help because I know that more difficult for entrepreneurs, for business owners, for leaders is to ask for help and delegate. Another thing that we don't know how to do is delegate because oh, the people will not do the things like I wanted and the people don't know. Well, teach them and delegate. Yeah, Natalie is laughing, right? No, no, but it's true. And this is also our problem because we want to do everything, delegate the things that you don't like it, the things that you don't know, find someone more intelligent than you that know how to do it and delegate and bring it in your team. Even you, Tasha, Jenny, even you that you are part of a system or something, you have peers and you can also ask them to support you. Okay, your team not necessary as a business owner is the people that you employ. Your team is also the people that support you outside. Okay, the, the people that giving you some support could be your mom supporting with the kids. This is part of your team because if you don't have your mom who take care of the kids, right? And all of that. So think out of the box. Okay, so beautiful. So thank you guys to share in this session with everybody. Give a high five, high five on the top, on the side, high five. Yay, high five, high five. And I will pass to Aaron and I will see you in next, next month, right? Aaron, all yours. You are mute. We can hear you. I was uh, testing out my sign language skills. I thought you guys were uh, onto it. Uh, okay, we're almost done. Now saying thank you very much, Claudia, for that. And really excited about the opportunity for the breakouts. I think we can really factor that in. So if you guys like the breakout format as well, and give you at least a little bit of time on your own with your groups, just uh, leave that in the feedback forms or in the comments on Facebook and uh, we see now votes we'll stick to this new direction but uh, claudia thanks again really humble great great facilitation with that appreciate it okay so last final notes for some of you who are joining us for the first time or maybe skip some of these steps if you don't know we are really really big on uh taking a checkup for the neck up what we call that it's just it's really important for you to check your entrepreneurial stage so if you haven't done the entrepreneurial stage assessment that's the link we'll leave it in the chat and in uh um, in Facebook, uh, but if you've already done it in the last 90 days, then I think for now, just look at your results again. And my recommendation from the free report is just focus on one area to improve for the journey. So basically when you get your results, some of you already know this, you'll be either put in a classification of uh, incubation or you come into the acceleration, which is the blue zone or the traction, which is the red zone. And that's where we start working on your systems. But I love like uh, what uh, I think Lisa recommended to Natalie, you know, stay in your lane is the best advice. We found this to be true in our company and in our tribe. Sometimes some of you are at different stages, best you get advice, just focus on the stage you're at. Don't get a stage advice from people who are maybe too far away from you because some of the issues or constraints are quite different. So try and get advice just specific for your current situation. It's very, very important. But the goal for everyone is to really have a healthy business and healthy, my friends, it's just about hitting your own financial sales targets, having a sustainable business, and uh, more importantly, having the choice to choose whether you want to work in it or out of it. And that's kind of what comes up when you're at stage, uh, you know, the, the rent stage. So uh, that's something to aspire to get to. So book for the month. Some of you have read this or haven't, but uh, some of you have asked me for requests on it. Uh, so a lot of what my concept I developed for this stage called the blue stage called the 
acceleration or market acceleration programs came from this really good book by Seth Godin. I'm a big fan. It's called Permission Marketing. And it just really is where I got that quote that it's much better to promote to people that are willing and interested to listen to you than promote to people who don't want to hear from you at all. And it just takes down a lot of the, or debunks a lot of the uh, marketing gimmicks out there where you just need to sell, sell, sell. And it goes more to ask for permission and qualify your clients first. And then you'll be able to at least have more traction and also more importantly, not feel like you're selling. So I'm a big endorser of that. And that's a book if you want to get around the philosophy of what we teach. Uh, this is a great book for you to start with, so I thought I'd recommend that this month. Okay, so what's the next steps for some of you? Uh, if you just joined us, step one, like we talked about, is uh, do the business stage assessment. I think it takes about three minutes. Just kind of fill it in there. And uh, CJ, who's maybe even in the room here, he personally looks after the, the information that comes from that, and they'll send you an email with some results uh, that you're looking for. But uh, secondly, if you're still new to the tribe and you want to get into this uh, community, like uh, Claudia mentioned, and open to getting help, uh, we're building a bit of a cool community there called the tribe community. We've put it in an online course that you can get it for free. Uh, but you know, we're really trying to develop this Q and A format of people asking concerns. We're trying to solve them within a month, and also then allow you to promote yourself and your brand in what we call Shine Week, which is a week where you can promote your product and service. But again, if you want to do it in a way that's uh, permission marketing oriented, we'll be more than happy to help you kind of curate that. But yeah, you just have a lot of access to tools and resources and uh, things like that through this community. And our goal here again is to equip, to connect and to help you collaborate with each other so you can develop organically and also win some business in a non-salesy way, I guess, yeah? So uh, that brings us to a close, my friends. I wanted to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much, Claudia, for your support. Uh, thank you very much, Lisa, for your amazing presentation. I definitely did know you're a qualified skipper, so I know who I'm going to call for my, one of my goals is to do the Sydney to Hobart race. I'm not sure you can coach me on that, but uh, it was really, really nice not only to hear about your amazing brand, but also to hear some of your uh, passions that you have. And I think that's something you love to do an interview and you to get a full cover story of not just what you do in your business, but why you do what you do and how that made you such, a, such an authentic person in your industry and we're really inspired by that. And uh, obviously to the rest of you guys, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, tribe members like Natalie, thank you very much for uh, being part of this journey ahead of you. I think you're gonna have a great time if you keep showing up. And uh, to the rest of the community, guys, uh, live, love, and contribute, and uh, don't give up on your dreams because they won't give up on you. So be going to post, everyone. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you in a month, and uh, stay in touch on Facebook. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your contribution, yeah? Have a good night. Thanks. Bye.